British crime writer Philip Kerr has set most of his books in Nazi Germany. Arts 21 met the creator of Berlin Noir at one of his crime scenes. We meet Philip Kerr in the luxurious Adlon Hotel. The writer has often been here in the past number of years to do research because his fictitious sleuth is on the Adlon staff as a hotel detective in Kerr's latest book, If the Dead Rise Not. Berlin, 1934. The Nazis have been in power for a year. Bernie Gunther isn't a Nazi himself. He considers them dangerous thugs. Nonetheless, he has no other choice than to work together with them again and again. As well as being a, a good detective in a moral sense, he's a good detective in a, an efficient sense. He's, he's good at his job. And that makes him sort of um, useful to the, the Nazis, who are quite used to sort of bending the law for their own purposes. What was your motivation to create a detective in the Third Reich? I was interested in the, what it was like to be an ordinary German during the 30s. What it was like, not, I mean, not to necessarily be involved with any of the, the Third Reich, but just to be a, an ordinary person. But I think also, this is, um, this is such an important story, the whole thing. I mean, for my money, it's the, you know, it's the most important historical event since the, uh, the Reformation. If the Dead Rise Not begins, like every Bani Gunther novel, with a seemingly innocuous case. A hotel guest is found dead in his bed, in room 210. While the doctor worked his trade, I took another look at the body. Rubush was a big, heavy man with short, fair hair and a face as fat as a hundred kilo baby. In bed, from the side, he looked like a foothill in the Hartz Mountains. Without his clothes, it was hard to place him, but I was sure there was a reason other than the fact that he was staying in the hotel while he seemed familiar to me. Barney Gunther conforms to the type of American hard-boiled detective made famous by the iconic mystery writer Raymond Chandler. Chandler's character, Philip Marlowe, could almost be an American relative of Barney Gunther. He's quite typical Berliner and he's got a very dry, black, bitter sense of humour, quite an aggressive sense of humour, um, which I like. I mean, I like the fact that, you know, Berliners can be as unfriendly as I am. <laughs> Gunther's case soon takes on a political dimension. It involves corruption in the building of Berlin's Olympic Stadium for the 1936 Games. Kerr tells of how ice-cold careerists and gangsters from the US prevent a boycott of the Games in order to make big money. The writer thinks the fact that the Olympics did take place was a fatal mistake. I think it would have had a profound effect on, on what happened thereafter in, in political terms. I think it would have given Hitler a lot more pause for thought about doing some of the things he did, like sort of um, the Anschluss and things like that. I think it was the success of the 36 Olympics that gave, helped give him the, the mental strength to do some of the things that he did afterwards. Philip Kerr's books have sold a million and a half copies in Germany alone. And a Spanish publishing house awarded If the Dead Rise Not the literary world's most highly remunerated prize, worth 125,000 euros. Kerr started his Bernie Gunther series in the late 1980s. After three books, there followed many other novels. But his readers wanted the detective back. So in 2006, the first of three further Bernie Gunther novels was published. I can't think of many people who get the chance to have a 15-year gap. Between, <laughs> between the novels. I mean, you know, I mean, Conan Doyle killed Sherlock Holmes and then brought him back quite quickly. Um, well, you know, I didn't have that problem because I didn't kill him off, but, you know, I feel really lucky, you know, that I've had a sort of been able to do it again. In the second part of If the Dead Rise Not, Kerr sends Gunther to Cuba. In 1954, in Havana, he sees the love of his life once again. And he also meets the man who nearly killed him 20 years before in Berlin. 
Someone had been redecorating the walls. They looked as if Jackson Pollock had come in and actively expressed himself with a ceiling brush and a large pot of red paint. Only it wasn't red paint that was smashed all over the office. It was blood, and lots of it. As we take our leave, Philip Kerr reveals to us that his next Bounty Gunter novel is as good as finished. It'll be published in the UK in September. This time, he's sending his sleuth to war against the Soviet Union.